Hi everyone, this is Becca from Becca's Music Room and this is Tali from Becca's Music Room. I'm the music teacher who talks about teacher tips, teacher life, teacherpreneurs, and all things that might hopefully make your life just a little bit easier. Today we are collectively here to talk about all of the lessons that I am doing in the month of August. So these lessons are for my first week of school. And now mine are a little weird. I see my students every day for a week. And then the next week I have a different set of kids. So in all of my lessons, I'll say, you know, Monday we'll do this, Tuesday we'll do that. But you can translate that into like week one, week two, week three, week four. I kind of see each rotation as like a unit. So I try to focus on the same thing for like a week. This set of lessons is all of my beginning of the year stuff. So honestly, some of it is not the most exciting thing ever because it is. Um, I'm kind of a hot mess. I came home from school. It's like six o'clock tonight. So we're just kind of doing what we can. I've got my tea and my little chip mug and my dogs are attacking each other as per usual. So let's get down to it. Um, I'm going to start with fourth and fifth grade. So if you have seen my previous videos, I used to somewhat group K1, 2, 3, and 4, 5. And they would be different. You know, I do like K and 1 are learning the same thing. They're both learning grizzly bear but first grade is doing piano and forte versus kindergarten's doing loud and soft so different things like that to make it a little different this year i don't have kindergarten at all but i do have separate lessons for first grade and second grade although some of their stuff does overlap and then different stuff for third grade and then fourth and fifth grade are kind of linked as well so Fourth and fifth grade I'll do together and then the rest will be separate. I'm just gonna start at the top and go it down because frankly, I just think that the little kid stuff is a little bit more fun. So we're gonna do that last. Um, all right, let's see. So fourth grade, the very first day, I get the kids into my classroom and then I show them where their seats are. And then we walk out of the classroom to practice coming in the correct way. So we practice going out of the classroom and coming back in the correct way. And I make a big deal about it and like pretend it's the beginning of class. They think it's the silliest thing ever. Hey, why don't you like, here, zits. There we go, plots. Nope, you're not gonna plots. She'll shake though, shake, shake. Good girl. Okay, um, and then we do this really simple activity. I actually have a blog post about it, so I'll link that down below. And it is a stick figure movement activity. So all they have to do is match the stick figures. And for this one, sometimes I do this with music. I have like all these different ways that I do it. For this one, I just did one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And I would switch, sometimes I would do eight, sometimes I would do four, I would kind of speed up and then slow it down, different things. Um, these are available in my TPT shop. I think they're like a dollar. I'm actually gonna make some variations of them as well because my kids love them and they actually are selling pretty well too. So we do that, it's super simple. And then we sit down and we talk about all these super fun things. So at that point, we, you know, mention the rules. We don't go super deep into the rules the first day, but we do talk about them. We talk about the consequences. We talk about the good things. We talk about the bad. We talk about the points. We talk about all that stuff. I'm not gonna go into that here because then we'd be here forever. That can be a whole separate video. If you're interested, let me know and I'll let you, and I'll make that for you. Um, and then when that's in, we do a song called Jump In, Jump Out. And so it's fairly common. I've seen a lot of people do it. It goes, jump in jump out and turn yourself around. I said, jump in, jump out and introduce yourself. And then one kid goes to the middle of the circle or to the front of the class or whatever, and they get to introduce themselves. So they say something they like, some, or sorry, their name, something they like and something they can do that we can all do. Cause inevitably I have a kid who's like, and I can do backflips. And I'm like, no, sit down. Um, anyway, so it sounds like this. Um, the solo part goes, my name's Miss Davis, and everyone says, yeah. So it's like, my name's Miss Davis, yeah. And I like ice cream, yeah. And I can snap, yeah. All right, all right, all right. And then you go back to the jump in, jump out. And then the next person goes. Um, it's really fun. I do, if you're gonna do this, do lots of different examples. So I do mine like 10 times. Like, I'm not even kidding. We do it so many times. And we'll do it different ways. Like, we'll do it first, but sitting down, and then we'll stand up and do it, and then we'll get in the circle, and then I'll do it again. And I like to give, like, food examples, color examples. You know, my favorite color is orange. I might say, I like to play tennis. I might say, I like puppies. You know, I try to give different things. And then, very important, 
have them think of what they are going to say when it is their turn. And that is very important because otherwise they'll be like, my name's Miss Davis and I like, uh, uh, and y'all nothing kills the mood faster than that. Um, so we do that and then usually we have like one minute left and so I've just been teaching them the words to one of our focus songs this week which is um, Jonto les moulons and so we just learn the words and then I sing it and have them play the rhythm on their legs I don't force them to sing on the first day I know there's like conflicting some people are like yes we always sing on the first day and other people are like we never sing on the first day with the older kids I usually don't make them sing the first day I do make them sing the second so that's how that is um, on Tuesday, we come back to our stick figures, first thing, and then I add in a blank sheet of paper, and I tell them when you get to the blank sheet of paper, you get to make up your own statue. So they only have to make up one, and then after like a round or two, I'll flip them over and say, okay, now they're all blank, you make up all of your own. And so I'm literally flipping blank pieces of paper. Um, and so it still gives them that like, figuring out the phrasing of the four beats, and then I have them get with a partner and one person gets to pick a statue that they make up and the other person follows and we switch every four beats. And then I shake a maraca and we switch. So whoever is following is now leading and whoever's leading is now following. I like to do lots of partner activities at the beginning of school so that the kids can get used. <laughs> you were making this really hard so that the kids can get used to what they do in partners because they tend to be better the first couple days of school because they're still kind of like not showing you your true colors yet. So I like to do all those really difficult things like moving around the classroom and getting partners and stuff like that the first week so we can make sure we know how to do it really well. Um, after that, we briefly go over the rules. I have them do a think pair share so they Think about each one, talk to their partner about each one. Um, I've done where they write down on a sticky note. Um, one of the things they talked about, I've done where they tell it out loud, I've done where they just tell their partner and they don't actually tell me anything. Just really quickly. And then we go over what slant means. So if you don't know, slant is an acronym. It stands for sit up, listen, ask questions, nod your head if you understand and track the speaker, so watch the speaker. So I actually have a video that we watch. It is a slant rap that is written. It's done by a teacher, so it's um, a little bit cheesy, but it's the song is good. The video is a little silly, but the song is good, and the kids get it stuck in their head, and they enjoy it. Like, even my fifth graders today, they were like, can we watch that video again? I was like, I guess so, so we did. Um, and we talk about what that means, and then I ask them, what is the worst thing you can do in music? And I take a bunch of different things and I'll say, break instruments, break the computer, get in a fight with the teacher. Like they come up with some stuff. One of the kids said, um, the worst thing you could do in music is light the carpet on fire. I was like, yeah, yeah, that would be bad. Um, and then we write a story about it. So I, my school is doing writing across the curriculum this year. So I'm trying to incorporate writing um, at least one day a week. If you have writing thoughts, leave them down below because I would love more lessons. I haven't done a lot of writing in the past, so I need as much as you can give me. So I made up this little sheet. It's really simple. It just says bad choices in music class. And then on the front it says write a fictional story where a student in music class breaks at least one of the rules and you can make it silly. I drew like a graphic organizer on the board and it just said like character name, what are they gonna do? What rule does that break? What comes next and how is it resolved? And so I have them do that on the back first. And then when they're finished, then they can write on the front. We usually don't have time to finish and then we have to finish on another day, which is super fun. But I will say even the classes that I think are gonna be a pain have actually really enjoyed this activity. Um, I don't know if it's my favorite. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it again, but it's there. If you're interested, let me know and I'll see if I can post um, like I'm gonna do like a pack for TPT about that. All right, so then on Wednesday, today is Wednesday, so this is fresh in my mind, um, I took out my rhythm cards and we just went over a couple rhythms and then I went and we're doing Little Kids Rock, which is a modern band integration in my older classes. And so they have some 
backing tracks, like rapping backing tracks. And so I played one of those and we just did a couple rhythms. And so I would just show them and I'd say, all right, one, two, here we go. And they'd say that, pull in the next one, one, two, here we go. And they'd say that. Um, and then when that was finished, then we, what do we do? Oh, then I did, okay. I just said, all right, repeat after me. And I just made up patterns with the words one, two, three, and four. Any order, just all over the place, you know, one, two, three, four, and then two, two, three, two, three, two, three. Um, and then we got into partners or groups again, and they got to chant or rap. I liked, I said both words so that, you know, you kind of get everybody. I said, you can chant or rap the numbers one, two, three, and four for about 30 seconds and then we'll switch with the backing track on and I tell him, you know, just go for it, just keep talking, you can't stop the whole time. And then I shake, I would shake the maraca, which is the same thing I did the day before to switch partners and then they would switch and the partner would be the rapper and they loved it. I'm not gonna lie, like we had so much fun today. And like as soon as I turned the backing track on, they were like, what is happening in here? Cause I don't normally include rap in my class. Um, and it's not like gonna be, you know, all that I teach, but it is a little bit of what I teach just to kind of, you know, get them a little more involved and excited. And so that was fun. First time we had tried that is this year. Um, and then we went over our Jean-Tol Les Moulins song again and figured out the word, the um, rhythm of the words. If you don't know that song, it goes, Chante les moulons, ticka ticka tucka, chante les moulons, tucka. Chante les moulons, ticka ticka tucka, chante les moulons, tucka. And the words are, I hear the mill wheel, ticka ticka tucka, I hear the mill wheel, tucka. I think there's a second verse. I didn't do the second verse. I just did the first one. Um, and then we figured out the rhythm. So I have these little cards. They're like sticking together because they were taped to the board. So I have these like taped to the board. Here we go. And then we figured out the rhythm and I skipped the first one. So we actually started at the end and we just went through each word and figured out, okay, how many sounds, how many syllables does it have? So how many sounds, so what would it be? And I have all the little things to go with it. And this was our new one that we were really looking at. And so this is the one that is new for us. So we went over that. Then we took our pretest. I know y'all, like first week, I was like, I kind of feel bad. Like, it's just, it's not as much fun as I wanted. So I am required to give pretests to at least my older kids. I don't give them to the younger kids. Um, and I make them myself. So I literally just went through, I've already mapped out, you know, what I plan to teach this year. And so I went through and figured, okay, if I want them to learn these concepts, that's what I put on here. So this is what it looks like. I tried to make it one page, just very short. And so the first two are listening and like dictation. And then I have them circle the rest, draw a line between the note and the number of beats that it gets, a couple and staff, and then some vocabulary questions. And then the back is all questions about them. So it says like, what's your favorite song? I um, would, do you want to be in band or chorus in middle school? What's your favorite thing in music? What's my least favorite thing in music? And my personal favorite, I want Miss Davis to know because they write the funniest things. A lot of them will say like, I want Miss Davis to know that I love her and she's awesome. And I'm like, oh my heart. And then I have other kids like today I had one write, um, I want Miss Davis to know that I can wiggle my ears. Okay, cool. Um, so very interesting responses on that. Um, on Thursday, we did a quick little icebreaker. I had the kids get in a circle and I read off questions about them and about music and different stuff. And if they agreed with the questions, they stepped into the circle. If they disagreed, they stepped out so I could see different things. So I asked, you know, things like, I have a brother, I have a sister, I like ice cream. And then I had other things that were, you know, things like I like to sing or I like to write so that I could kind of get a feel for what the students liked and just what we're gonna do this year. Then we did this game and song Aquaqua, which is super fun. I cannot for the life of me find it online cause I cannot figure out how to spell it. If you have a good link to it, please leave it down below. But it is a 
Um, and it was really folk song and game. And it goes, ah, qua qua de la oma, qua qua qua, do si ma chico, trico trico la, fallo, 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 fallo. One, two, three, four, five. And the kids put their hands out and they pass the beat along with the song. And whoever gets clapped on five is out. And it is super fun. They we went to the keyboards for the first time, mostly just so that I can assign them a keyboard. I have a keyboard lab in my class. I have used it not super well, but I have used it. And so I always assign the kids a keyboard because it just makes life easier. Um, and this year, like I mentioned, we're doing Little Kids Rock. So I printed out these chord charts. And basically Little Kids Rock is like getting kids to play modern band instruments and then learning to read from that. So one of the tools they have is these piano keyboards. They have all these different chords. So I just printed out the major. I stuck them in the, like where the keys are. And so they literally just have to play the notes that are colored and that's it. And so we did the song, We Will Rock You because it has a very distinctive rhythm that they can play along with. It's fun, they enjoy it. Friday, good gracious, this is a long video. On Friday, we did Jean de Les Moulins again. We pulled out the rhythm sticks and then we played some rhythm cards along with it. And then we played telephone rhythms. So I had the kids get into two different lines and they sit with the person like in front of them, sitting in front. And I had rhythm cards all spread out. I believe I found this on the internet, but I'm not sure where it came from. We'll see if I can find it. And then I go to the back and on the back of the two people in the very back of the line, I tap a rhythm and then they have to tap it on the shoulder of the person in front of them. They tap the person in front of them all the way up to the first person. And the first person has to go and find the rhythm card. And it is much harder than it seems because they have to be accurate and then they also need to know how to see it. So it was super fun. I usually do, um, two teams and then I'll put my name down. So if neither team can find the right rhythm, then I win. I have won every time so far, but we're getting there. And they just thought that was super fun. Um, and then the last thing we do before we left is these little Friday reflections papers. These look bad because I forgot to change the size of the slide before I printed. Um, but so this one says, what did we learn this week? How do you feel about it? like totally lost, I feel okay but need more practice, I got it and could teach someone else. What was your favorite activity this week? And then is there anything you want Miss Davis to know? Because again, they write very helpful and informational things because sometimes they'll tell me things that I didn't know um, or they'll say, you know, I really liked this or I didn't really like that. Just all sorts of, all sorts of things on those papers. So that's fourth and fifth grade. I am, well, I'll cut some of this out, but I am 20 minutes into the video gracious all right third grade some of third grade stuff does overlap this time that doesn't always happen that's mostly just because we had you know rules pretests, that kind of stuff so third grade also did the four beat statue activity they also did the rules they also did jump in jump out but then we switched it and did a song called Wawako, which is from the country of Mali in Africa. This is one of our Musical Explorers songs from last year. I will leave a link to the lesson. It's not my lesson, it's the Musical Explorers lesson. Um, I'll leave a link to the lesson down below and you can go check it out. And it also has the recording. So it is a song from Mali and the words are Wawako Sikulaiko. And the meaning of the song is that people should not fight and that they should get along. And it's super cute because on that part, there's a little clapping thing that you do. And so you go, um, Wawako, and you clap someone else. Sikulaiko. So what we did is we listened and we did the clapping and then we walked around the room. And every time we got to that part, we stopped and whoever you were closest with, you would clap with. Again, I want to get lots of movement, lots of talking to other people out of the way, beginning of the year. And that's super fun and they know it from last year so they were not like oh this is so weird because they already knew it um and then if we have time we go over charlie over the ocean which is one of our songs from this week it goes charlie over the ocean and it's an echo song so they echo charlie over the sea charlie over the sea charlie caught a blackbird charlie caught a blackbird can't catch me can't catch me 
All right, so Tuesday, we also do the four beat statue with the partners. We go over the rules, we do the slant wrap, we go through Charlie of the Ocean, and then we do the rules story, so also very similar. On Wednesday, we do Charlie of the Ocean, and then I have them come up with different sea animals. So instead of Charlie caught a blackbird, they'll say, you know, oh, seahorse, and I'll say, okay, Charlie caught a seahorse, and I do that a few times. I walk around and check off if they're matching pitch or not, because that's helpful to know in third grade. And then I pulled out these little cards that I made that are different sea animals. I'm eventually gonna have this up in my shop, but it's not there yet because I'm missing a few. Um, and so different sea animals and the kids got to pick one out and then they got to be the leader. So I had some solo singing already first week. Yes. Um, and I picked just a few of them to do that. And then we did, um, we learned our next song, which is called Seashell Seashell. It goes, Seashell Seashell, sing a song to me. Sing about the ocean, sing about the sea. And that's a really fun one. It's very simple and it has half notes. So we're reviewing half notes is my point in picking this. Charlie of the Ocean, I love echo songs because they just make life easier because they're easy to do. Um, so we do the seashell song and then we took our pre-test. Okay. Thursday is Center's Day. I didn't do Center's with fourth and fifth grade. This one, this rotation, I actually meant to, but some of the activities took longer than I thought they were going to. So centers for Thursday, we have three different things. So the first one is a rhythm sort. So I have a bunch of cards that have country names. It would have been better if I had done the sea animal names, but my room is country themed and like countries, like maps, map themed. And so I wanted to have some kid work to put up actually in the hallway on my bulletin board. So they pulled a country out of the box and then they had to sort it by what rhythm it would fall under. So we talked about this one extensively beforehand. They usually get it pretty quickly. I always feel like that's gonna be complicated and then it's not, which is cool. The second thing we're doing is composing with blocks. So I got these whiteboard blocks from Target and I love them. I'm super excited. It's the first time we're using them. And I told them what I meant for them to do is write like a quarter note on one side and like eighth notes on one side and then have like four and roll them to get a rhythm and then play it on the castanet. But what they actually did and kind of worked better, they just wrote like a four beat rhythm on each side and then they would roll it and they might roll it with the person next to them. So they now had an eight beat rhythm. And so they did that and it was really easy. I just had these like little markers with it and that was super fun. And again, I thought it was gonna be more confusing than it was. And then we played Kaboom. So I have mine on popsicle sticks for this one. I actually have this available in my TPT shop. I have tons of Kaboom games, but I have these rhythm ones, like the same one, um, where you can just print out little cards. So Kaboom is super fun. I do it in like all my centers because I love it. So the kids pull out a popsicle stick or a card and they read the rhythm. If they get it right, they get to keep it. If not, they put it back. If they get one that says kaboom, then they put them all back. So they take turns going in a circle and whoever has the most sticks at the end wins. And it's wonderful because of the kabooms, it never ends, ever. It just keeps going because someone will always get kaboom and then have to stick all their sticks back and then you have all of those to practice. Normally I have a teacher station, but because it was the first week I wanted to be able to walk around, but I did, um, but I did check off as a classwork grade whether or not they were reading the sticks correctly. So I walked through and I listened to everyone read at least one or two and checked it off on the clipboard. On Friday, we went over Charlie over the ocean and then we did seashell with the drums. So I got out the big Chubanos and they had to play the rhythm on the drums. We did it super, super, super quick. I just had them in lines and they rotated. Everyone got like two or three chances to play it. And I marked off everyone who got that nice rolled half note is really what I was looking at um on there and that was super fun very easy and then what i want to do but it hasn't actually happened because we ran out of time is read there was an old mermaid who swallowed a shark and this is what all of these cards are for for each of the things that the old mermaid swallows 
I have a little card and then we were gonna sort the cards by the rhythm that they get. So like shark would be like ta, or I guess you could do a half note. Um, so put the shark on there. I haven't actually done that. This is my third week. Maybe this week we'll make it happen because just, you know, they like come a little bit late and then we run out of time. And then we play the Charlie of the Ocean game, which is basically, um, which is basically Duck Duck Goose, but with singing. So one person gets up, they're the leader. They carry, what did I name you? Saint Saul. I named him Saint Saul. All of my animals are named after composers. Um, so Saint Saul it was their purse, their little fish to carry. At the end of this song, um, everyone has their hands behind their back like that. At the end of the song, they drop Saint Saul into the hands of the person next to them, and then they chase like in Duck Duck Goose. Um, you don't have to use that, but I like it. So I tell them St. Saul is going to sing and not they have to sing. So that is very nice. And then they also do the Friday Reflections. <sighs> and then that. Gracious. Okay, we're almost there. Second grade and first grade. So first thing that we did is I met them in the hallway with my djembe. And I walked them in to the study beat. And we kind of walk around the room a little bit so that we get some of the wiggles out. And then I can lead them to the back to take a seat so that I can then call them to their seats on the carpet. Um, so we did that. And then we played, this is super, super lame. We played a little game where they had to walk in a circle around the carpets to the study beat. And when the beat stopped, then they s had to find their dot. And I totally cheated to make sure they were close to their dot so I didn't have anyone like running across the room. And I know that's like super silly, but that's what we did. <laughs> um, we briefly went over the rules and then we learned this song, Seesaw Sagger Down, which is a nice little So Me song. It's in 6-8, so it's a little bit different from what the kids are used to because I tend to do, you know, 2-4, four, 4-4. Four, four. Um, I'll link that down below. I don't want to like sit here and sing everything. So we did that. I want to do Hickety Pickety Bumblebee, but we have not had time. So I have just been skipping and doing the Wawa Co activity and then being done with the first day. Also, I have been at my school for three years, so I know most of the kids. Tuesday, I introduced my new way of saying hello to them, which is going to be a whole separate video. So I'm not going to talk about that today. And then we did a house game. So I found this in a book. It's like 89 engaging movement activities or 99, I don't know, some number of engaging movement activities. Um, so I have these little houses that I made and I put them all around the room and you have one less than you have people. The kids walk to the study beat. They could do it to music. I just did it with my drum, walk to the study beat. And then when the study beat stops, they have to find a house to stand on. Um, so they stood on a house. One person obviously is left over. That person links arms with someone else and then they have to travel together for the rest of the game and you pick up another card. So it's super fun. We usually only do a couple rounds because it does get a little bit crazy, but it is very fun. Um, and then we do some vocal exploration with my friend Bizet. So I, we just, have Bizet move up and down and then our voices match him and then we learn the bluebird song there's like 50,000 bluebird songs I even did one last year this one goes bluebird bluebird through my window bluebird bluebird through my window bluebird bluebird through my window won't you be my partner now Pino was singing with me. Oh, how nice of you. Um, and so there's actually a second verse, but I forgot to teach it to them. Oops. So we learned this song. I have them keep the steady beat on them. And then we listened to the second movement of Beethoven's Seventh Symphony because you can very clearly hear the rhythm, and the rhythm just goes ta, ti, ti, ta, 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 ti, ti, ta, 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 ti, ti, ta, ta, ta. Rest. Um, and so I'm kind of like reminding them about rest since that was the last thing that we did before we left last year. And so we did that and we listened and we, I have it like up on the board and they just whispered, ta, ti, ti, ta, ta. and I pointed to the board. And then once we kind of got it down, then we did it with egg shakers. So that was fun. You're stepping on all my stuff. You are. I know they're so lonely now that I'm gone all day. 
so sad. Okay, on Wednesday, we do the song Looby Loo. So that song goes, here we go Looby Loo, here we go Looby Light, here we go Looby Loo on a Saturday night. And we walk in place while we sing that part. Um, you can also have them walk in a circle. I didn't this time, but sometimes I do. And then it goes, you put your right hand in, you take your right hand out, you gave your right hand a shake, 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 and you turn yourself about. And you can do left hand, right hand, left, left, right foot, left foot. And it's one of those wonderful things that just never ends, and it's great. So we do that to get all their wiggles out, and then we go over our Bluebird song. Nope. And then we go over our Seesaw song, and then I introduce them to this little staff. So we have been doing high and low all week on our bodies. And so I give each of them these little cards and we just do some patterns, either saying high and low or so and me, depending on where they are. And I have them point to the thing. So we'll do like, I'll sing, so me, so me. And then they sing, so me, so me. And I walk around and just check off who is getting the concept of like high and low. Um, and some of them I'm still just singing hi, low, hi, low, and that's fine. And then we sing the seesaw song and we point with that, pick them up, and then we played the bluebird game. Now again, there's a lot of different bluebird games, so I have done multiple versions. The one that we're doing for this one, the kids grab hands, they make windows by putting their hands up, so it's like this, and then one bluebird walks in and out of the windows, and at the end of the song when it sings, to be my partner now whoever they're closest to they grab hands and I tell them they're making a bluebird train because I never ever say anything about actually holding hands like we don't say holding hands I say make a bluebird train and then the new person has to lead the train and it's super fun especially when you get to like 20 kids in the train it's a little bit crazy but super fun um, and then after that, we listened to the song Loop De Loop. So it's from the 50s and it's based off of Looby Loo, but it's Loop De Loop and it's like pretty much the same thing. So that was fun just to kind of give like another connection to the song. On Thursday, we start with a roller coaster vocal exploration. So we pretend that we're on a roller coaster. I go first and them and we, you know, ride all up and down and they have to follow as well. Um, and it's just super fun. We go over the seesaw song and then we do these with little eraser manipulatives. So we do little patterns, we'll like, so me, so me, and have to put it on the staff very briefly just to kind of get them started. We did not do that last year, so I really want to get that just kind of figured out. Um, and then we go back to the Beethoven song. I wanted to have them move around the room and make a pose on the rest but most of the time we don't have time so we have been doing xylophones I set up my xylophones in the front and then everyone has a rhythm stick and so everyone's playing ta, ti, ti, ta, ta, on their rhythm sticks and my five friends at the front play on the xylophones and then they go and switch with someone else and then they go switch with someone else so everyone gets a turn at the xylophones it's very simple I take off most of the bars so that it doesn't sound horrible on Friday, we do the Musical Houses activity again, but this time with a song, so with actually, I have loop de loop written down. And then on when we stop, whenever I pick up a card, I have them read that rhythm. Um, alternatively, you could have them read the rhythm of the house that they're standing on. Either one is fine. Um, so we do that, super fun. Then we read this book. It's called Spry Sparrow from Drab to Fab. I totally change those words when I read it. Um, by Donna McKinley Hammond Tree. I have to be honest, this is not like my favorite book in the world, but it's pretty cute. It talks about um, loving the colors that you are and ask what makes you colorful, like what on the inside makes you different from other people. And so then it leads to a discussion of, well, what makes you colorful? And we get to talk about it. Um, then we go over the Seesaw song. And then we play London Bridge. So I take them to the seesaw and I'm like, oh, I know another song about London and start singing it. And most of the kids know the song, but they don't know the game. So that is super fun. And of course, that game, they walk in a circle, two people make a bridge. Whoever gets trapped 
is then trapped underneath for the next verse. I am just projecting the verses up on the board, and so we're singing all sorts of different ones through there. Last one, thank goodness, because we are way late. Oh, and then they also have the reflection sheet, but theirs is a little bit smaller. It just says, what did you learn this week? And how did you feel about it? And those are the only questions because second graders, at least at my school, are not good at the writing thing. Like, most can't even do that. All right, down to first grade. Some of theirs overlaps with second grade, but not all of it. So they also walk into the beach, find their seat. We talk about the rules. Then we do the song, Hey Jim Along, Jim Along, Josie, um, which goes, Hey Jim Along, Jim Along, Josie. Hey Jim Along, Jim Along, Joe. Hey Jim Along, Jim Along, Josie. Hey Jim Along, Jim Along, Joe. And I have them walk to the study beat during that part, and then we switch it each verse. So then we do tiptoe along, tiptoe along, Josie. We do jump, jump along, jump along, Josie. And that's really fun because they don't have to be able to sing it to participate. Um, since it's first, you know, first day right off the bat and then it's pretty easy so they can figure it out pretty simply and they get to get all the wiggles out, of course, and we also do the Wawa Ko song. On Tuesday, we also do the house game and then we learn the Bluebird song, we do the Bluebird exploration, we read the book on Tuesday and then we get our egg shakers out and we play the egg shakers along with the steady beat of Bluebird. And then I do, um, and then I'll do some rhythms and just have them echo them back to me. And then, and I also have them keep the beat while I sing London Bridge so they can get that in their ear. On Wednesday, we do the bird exploration again, the bird song, and then we, and I have been doing that actually at the keyboard. And then I say, oh, I wonder who knows this song. And I start singing the alphabet song. <laughs> of course, they all know it. So they join in. They're super excited. We're keeping the beat because that's our study. Our um, I can statement is I can sing high and low and I can keep the steady beat. And that leads us into one of my favorite books. I'm super excited about this. I'm actually about to film a whole video just on this lesson. So we read the book Chicka Chicka Boom Boom and they keep the steady beat. And then we figure out the rhythms to the words. So I have these little cards and we figure out the rhythm for each of the words. Um, I did tape today and then I got smart and put little um, paper clips on them so that they can hold them. And then we get out our castanets and I have them play along with me. So for most of the book, they're sitting with their hands on their shoulders and when we get to certain parts, then I will say it and they will echo back and play it with me. And it's all the things that are on my cards. So like chicka chicka boom boom, chicka chicka boom boom. Will there be enough room? Will there be enough room? And then um, I'll meet you at the top of the coconut tree. And then I also did in the middle where it's like skid skittle, do blah, whatever. Um, that part as well so that they can just play a little bit more. So on that part, it would look kind of like this. I'll show you. Um, so I would, I actually, I do it too, so they can see. And I would do A told B and B told C. I'll meet you at the top of the coconut tree. And then they say, I'll meet you at the top of the coconut tree. And then I keep reading. And that's pretty much what it looks like the whole time. Um, and then... So yeah, on Thursday, we do a pipe cleaner activity, which is super fun. They all get a pipe cleaner and we bend it into different shapes and do vocal exploration along with it. So they have to, you know, go up, go down. I let them make their own shapes. I make shapes that we all do, all that kind of stuff. Then we do gym along Josie. And if the class is good, then we walk around the room while we do that. Um, and then we pull out the rhythm sticks. We play them along with Jim Along Josie. We play them along with Bluebird. We play them along with London Bridge. And then we play them along with some rhythm cards um, because I did teach my first graders rhythm last year. So they do know it, at least the ones that were with me. Oh, I'm sorry. This is my Friday lesson. I have like an arrow that has them on the other side. And then we play the London Bridge game. So on Thursday, which I got them mixed up, on Thursday, we do the pipe cleaner vocalization. On Friday, we do it, but we make letters with it. So we make like O, we make B, and it just is a little more fun and kind of ties in that alphabet thing we had going on. 
on Thursday, we do the pipe cleaner vocalization, just normal. Um, walk and stop, which is a super fun game. A song, it goes, well, we walk and we walk and we walk and we stop. We walk and we walk and we walk and we stop. We walk and we walk and we walk and we stop. We walk and we walk and we walk and we stop. And then again, you can change it to we jump and we jump. You can change it to we skip and we skip. All those kind of things. So we do that. And then we sing London Bridge so that we know it for tomorrow. And then we play the Bluebird game that I already explained. So we should be good. Whew, that was a lot. So I'm going to wrap this up. I hope you enjoyed this. Hope you got some ideas. I will link everything I have down below. So whether that's a blog post, a video, or whatever. If you want more information about something and I don't have a link down below, please let me know. Um, some of these are things that I plan to make into TBT products, but it just has not happened yet. So if you're interested, definitely let me know down below and I will do my best to make sure that it is done first. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know down below if you're doing any of these things or anything else that's fun or any extensions that we could add. And thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please make sure you like, subscribe, and share. I do one of these videos every single month so that you can see all sorts of lessons Hopefully they're not all this long. I make no guarantees and have a wonderful week.